Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex, and this month we're doing a follow-up to a video I did last month, which was installing the Windows version of the Plex Media Server on a very low-cost mini PC, in this case the GMK Tech G3, which is powered by an Intel N100 processor. You can get these for $150 or less, and that's with RAM and storage. And what a lot of folks wanted me to do was install it on Linux. So that is what we're going to do today. So I did get Linux installed on here. I am going with Ubuntu 24.04 because what I want to do is find the easiest way to get the Plex Media Server running on this without having to go through the command line or do anything crazy. There are better ways to install Plex than what we're going to look at today. But if you were looking for something that is a very similar process to what you might do on Windows where you just get a simple installer and go at it. This is going to get you there and you'll see that the Plex Media Server actually does a little better under Linux than it does under Windows and we'll explore why that is a little later in the review here. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. Also, the GMK Tech Mini PC here came in free of charge from GMK Tech. However, they have not paid for this review, and they have not reviewed the content either, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and install the Plex Media Server on Linux. Now, one of the things I like about this little mini PC is that it gives you a bunch of storage options. So you do have a PCI Express slot here for NVMe drives. I've got Windows booting off of this one, and then I installed Ubuntu on the mSATA drive here. So this is an mSATA slot, and this is an NVMe slot. So you can dual boot or you can use both of these in your Linux environment if you want. And then I've also attached an external hard drive where my media is stored and we'll get to that in a second. Now I chose to go with Ubuntu for this project and the reason is is that I have found Ubuntu to be the easiest to get started with, especially if you don't have a lot of familiarity with Linux. You have all of the power of Linux at your fingertips. But if you just want to get started with something without having to jump through a lot of configurations and different hoops, this is the best way to get going. It is super easy to set up. Where you find the download is at ubuntu.com and you go over to desktop and then you just download the desktop uh, option here. And they have some instructions here as to how to install it. You just need a little USB drive to boot from and then you will be good to go. If you do intend to dual boot Windows, just be very careful that you don't reformat your Windows drive. But if you're starting out from scratch with one of these things, you can wipe out Windows and just install uh, Ubuntu and go from there. This will boot up and work perfectly without having to download any drivers with Ubuntu. It just came up and just started working and you can't ask for more than that. Now the installation process will vary from one computer to the next based on how the storage devices are configured but they've got a very helpful tutorial that takes you through every single step of the install process. And I would load this up on a tablet or a separate computer and just follow the directions as you go. And you'll find it's really not all that hard and pretty much the same type of process that it would be if you were installing Windows from scratch. And then when it's done, you get this. You got a great desktop here. You have some very familiar interfaces to play around with here. You've got some basic applications and then many more applications that you can find inside of their little app center here. Now, as I mentioned at the outset, there are probably better ways to run Plex on Linux. My preference is to install it as a Docker container, but we're looking for simplicity here. And I found the simple way, which is using the app center actually works. And I was able to get everything working just like I did on Windows with a few improvements as well. So what I did here is I opened up the app center and I searched for Plex media server and you'll see it's right here and it's got the latest version that was uh, updated as of June 13th and today is June 24th. The App Center will update the app over time. And so what I'm going to do here is just click on the install button and I'm going to type in my password and that will be it. It'll then install the Plex Media Server and we can get off and running here. So I'm going to click on open and it will summon my web browser and we can carry on to the next step. Now, when your web browser loads up, it's going to have you log into Plex. If you don't yet have a Plex account, you will need to create one. And after you do that, you will be brought to this screen. And we're going to click on Got It Here, where we can name our 
uh, Plex server. I'm going to call mine Nuckbox Linux, just so I can understand where it's going to be at. Uh, you have the choice to make your data available outside your home, your media outside your home if you want. We've talked about some VPN solutions for this as well. I'm just going to leave that checked on for now, but it's your preference as to whether or not you want to do that. And then we're going to click on Next. And after this process here, uh, we're going to start building out the libraries that we want to have on our new Plex server. Now before we build out our libraries, I did want to point your attention to the solid state drive that I have attached to the computer here because my media is going to be on this external drive, which might be the case in your situation as well. Now just like on Windows, you can have your libraries point to multiple locations. So you can have some media on the internal hard drive, some on externals, you can even have some mounted on the network somewhere. But to keep things simple today, we're going to focus on just the media that's on this drive. Now I'm going to jump over to the equivalent of the file explorer here inside of Ubuntu. And what I'll do is zoom in on this a little bit more for you here. And you'll notice that on this drive, which I call Plex stuff, I have two folders. One is called Movies, where I've got two Star Wars films. And I also have uh, season three of Star Trek Picard on my TV folder. And if I go over to uh, the properties of this particular drive, I want you to note where it is located. So you'll see here that it says parent folder is media slash Lon Seidman. And then uh, we're going to, of course, look for the Plex stuff inside of this directory. And I'm pointing this out because we're going to need to navigate to this inside of the Plex interface here in a second. So let me close this out. And what we're going to do is add a library. So let's click on that. And we're going to start with the movies and we'll just call it movies. And I'll click next. And now we're going to go and browse for our media folder. And let me zoom in on it here again for you. And what we're going to do now is click on browse. And you'll see here, I don't see that drive, but if I click here and then look for media and then see Lon Seidman and then see Plex stuff, there's my movies folder. And I'm going to add that. And again, this is just exactly the same process as we found on Windows. And I'm going to add another library now for my TV shows, which we'll do here. And then we'll just call that TV shows. I'll click next and then we'll browse again and just repeat the process. So it's a little different from Windows because things are in a different place, but for the most part here, it is very easy to find your way around. And we'll just point it at this. Now, this is one area where Linux has gotten a little bit easier because in the past, they used to have all these issues with permissions and everything. That does not seem to be the issue any longer here. And it might be because I am logged in uh, as me right now, and this is running uh, on my account. But this is similar to how you would run your Windows machine anyhow. Okay, so now we are uh, pretty much ready to go here. So let's navigate over to that uh, Plex server that we just set up and see where the media is. All right, so on the Plex web interface here, if we go over to more and I scroll down a little bit, uh, what you will see now is Nuckbox Linux, which is what we just installed. And it looks as though the movies are there and the TV shows are there. So it was able to index everything correctly here without issue. And if I go over to the uh, server settings, we can look for a couple of other things we want to make sure are in place. Uh, the big one that I look for is whether or not hardware transcoding is enabled. So if I go over to the transcoder here, you can see that we have use hardware acceleration when available. And I also have HDR tone mapping checked on. And this one's a big one because this does not work in hardware on the Windows side, but it does work in hardware on the Linux side, even on this cheap PC. And I'll show you that in a second. Let's take a look now at my phone and see if it is picking up the server. All right, so here we are on my phone. And if I go into the sidebar menu here, I can click on more. And there I will see all the different servers that I have access to. And sure enough, we've got Nuckbox Linux here. And I can select the TV show folder, which is where we have those Star Trek Picard episodes. I can browse through the media just like we do on any other device here. And if I wanted to play back one of the episodes, I can just go ahead and hit play. And what this will do is communicate with the server and start playing everything. Now, of course, this server right now, because we're on the local network, is doing a direct play. But if I wanted to test out the hardware transcoding, what I can do here is go into the settings and we'll down convert this maybe to 720p high. 
and we'll see how long it takes to come back up. But pretty quick there, I see. And what I'm going to do now is jump back over to our desktop screen here and take a look at the status page. All right, if we jump over to our dashboard, which you can access by clicking on the activity button up here and selecting your server, you can see, if I zoom in, that this episode is playing back without issue and we are doing hardware transcoding. We know we're hardware transcoding because we see these little HWs here next to the video line. So that's a good sign. And if I zoom back out here and scroll down, uh, you can see what our bandwidth is looking like, but more importantly, what our system load is. And transcoding this 1080p episode to 720p is not consuming all that much here, as you can see. So we're doing about, I don't know, anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of the system resources here for that transcode, which is good. And we're obviously got a lot more room here to take on a few other transcodes simultaneously. Now, the big difference here, as I mentioned, is that Linux Plex servers can do hardware HDR to SDR tone mapping, whereas on Windows, you can't do it in hardware and your system pretty much grinds to a halt. So in the last video where we were using this very same hardware on Windows, once I booted up a 4K HDR movie and tried to transcode it, everything just kind of ground to a halt. Let's see how it does now that we are running on Linux. All right, so right now we are still playing back the Star Trek episode to my phone. You'll see that on the left. And on the right, we are playing a 4K HDR movie to my laptop. Now, right now, you'll notice that we are running at the full bandwidth of this Blu-ray MKV file, so there's no transcoding going on. It looks like it's sending 106 megabits per second, according to the control panel, and you can see we've got direct stream here. Now, on the laptop, what I'm going to do right now is change that full bandwidth to a transcoded 8 megabits per second. I'm going to click on it right now. You'll see that change. It will take a second for it to buffer up, but what you will notice here is that it is hardware transcoding the video. Now, before on our Windows uh, example, it wouldn't do this in hardware because this 4K movie had an HDR video feed, which the server on Windows could not process in hardware. It had to go out to the CPU, essentially. It was unaccelerated. But because Linux supports HDR to SDR inside of the hardware transcoder, we are now able to watch this movie with a hardware transcode and still have room for more. So check it out. Whereas before we were at 100%, now we are at 33%, and we're still running the other episode here. I'll zoom in so you can see it better. So we've got plenty of room here now to play back our 4K media transcoded for when we're on the road, uh, pretty much the same way we would play back regular SDR content like we're doing with that Star Trek episode. And that's on the same exact hardware. I haven't upgraded anything. And as you can see here, things are performing much better. So this is one of the reasons why a Linux server might be a little better depending on the type of media that you are storing. And I can't show you the video on my laptop now for copyright reasons, but I can tell you it looks great. It doesn't look fuzzy. It doesn't have any weird colors. The colors look pretty good. And we are doing that conversion here in real time via hardware. And as you can see now, as it's getting settled in, our usage is even less than it was before. So very efficient serving here inside of Linux. And as you can see, this install method isn't all that difficult to do either. And as you can see here, memory usage is pretty minimal as well. So this is a very efficient process. I will pull up the system monitor here so you can see what's going on. So the Star Trek episode is using about 44 megabytes of RAM. The 4K movie is using a lot more, about 243 megabytes of RAM. But even if you just had 8 gigabytes on this little server, you would probably be doing just fine. This one has 16, um, but again, I think uh, you will be able to get by with a pretty minimal configuration here, yet get a very effective Plex server. Now, the update process is very similar to what you might experience on the Apple or Windows stores. You go back over to the App Center here, you go over to Manage, and you can do your updates from here. So I can check for updates, for example. Because we just installed Plex, we won't have an update for that application. But as you can see here, Firefox and a few other things do have updates, and I can just click Update All 
type my password in and make my updates that way. Now, one of the reasons why I prefer to use Docker for Plex servers is that it's much easier to manage your Plex library and move it from one machine to the other. But I did find where the data gets stored using this installation method. So if you boot up your file manager here and just type in a slash on the top here, uh, what you will do is go over to the var folder and then you're going to want to look for snap and inside of here you will see plex media server and this is where let me move the window over here a little bit this is where all of your stuff is stored so you can see we have our library folder here and this is where all the plex data gets put so this is where you'd want to back up from and again, a little more effort here to find it and back it up than you would on a Docker installation, but still not hard to find. So overall, I found it to be a pretty simple process here to install the desktop version of Ubuntu, head over to that app store and get the Plex media server operating pretty much as easily as you can on the Windows side. And you still have a great desktop computer here that you can use for other tasks as Plex runs in the background. And these little N100 Intel chips just are super snappy, and I think you'll find it to be a great experience, both for the desktop usage here, but also for Plex serving. One area that I am going to explore in the near future is looking at other ways to get the Plex media server installed. We previously demoed Docker installations on a Synology NAS, and I've heard from a lot of you that Unraid is a really great way to run a Plex server and other little server applications on low-end hardware like this too. So we've got a lot more to explore here, but if you were curious about Ubuntu and Linux, I think you can get going here with a Plex server that will do a little bit more than the Windows server for absolutely zero cost. I do want to add though on the topic of cost that the hardware transcoder does require a Plex pass on both Windows and on Linux, but as you saw here you get a few more hardware transcoding options on the Linux side. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.